We are in Chapter 6, Additional Topics in Integration. Section 6.1 is Integration by Parts and Integral Tables. The technique of integration by parts allows us to reduce complicated integrals into simpler integrals. So the formula that we have for integration by parts is listed below. Give that some stars. It's definitely something we need to know. Integration by parts, if u and v are differentiable functions, then the integral of u dv can be broken up into u times v minus the integral of v times du. So conditions for integration by parts. First thing, the integrand can be written as the product of two factors, u and v. So again, product of two factors. Two says it is possible to integrate dv to get v and differentiate u to get du. So one of the struggles students have with this is that you're going to be integrating in the problem and also differentiating in the problem. So make sure to keep those rules separate. Three, the integral of v du can be found. So we have an example right below. So the first example says, find the integral of x e to the negative 2x dx. First thing you want to try is always just integrating with how it is written, and we cannot integrate this. We are multiplying two things that involve x's. So the next thing we learned is u substitution, and u substitution doesn't work for this. You can try that out on your own, but if you were to let u equal negative 2x, and then go ahead and go through that process, you would still be stuck and be unable to actually integrate it when you do that. So the next thing that we have is integration by parts. And so for this, we have two parts in this problem. We're gonna select something that we can take a derivative of. And usually that that we take the derivative of is gonna be something that can get smaller. So I underlined x. And so with that, I'm gonna let u equal x. And that means that leftover part, all the rest of it, is going to be what we call dv. And so this is going to be e to the negative 2x dx. And then from here, we're going to take the derivative of u, so du. And that's nice because when you take the derivative of x, it's just 1 or dx. And then we're going to integrate over here on dv integrate both of those sides and when we do the integral of dv is v and then the integral of e to the negative 2x with respect to x is going to become negative 1 half e to the negative 2x and we're not going to put our plus c we'll do that at the very end so leave it like that and then our formula for integrating by parts is going to be the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. And so we did have u was equal to x, and dv is also equal to e to the negative 2x dx. So substituting everything in that we have, we have u times v. So x times negative 1 half e to the negative 2x minus the integral of v, which was negative 1 half e to the negative 2x times du, and du for us is just dx. So you'll notice that with this, once you've done integration by parts, we're actually in our original variable x. And so from here, rewrite the first term a little bit nicer. It's negative 1 half x e to the negative 2x. I can move the negative 1 half out in front of my integral and have plus 1 half integral of e to the negative 2x dx. And then from here I can integrate this. And so our first term still stays the same. And the integral of e to the negative 2x is going to be negative 1 half e to the negative 2x. And then here is where I'm going to put my plus c. So we can clean this up just a little bit and rewrite it as negative one-half x e to negative 2x, then one-half times negative one-half would be negative one-fourth, e to the negative 2x plus c. So this would be our final answer. You could also rewrite this by factoring out a GCF, we'll say like negative one-fourth e to the negative 2x, and then it would be times 2x plus 1, and then also that plus c. But I'm going to leave it like this. It doesn't necessarily make it any easier with solving, so we'll leave it that way. 
The next example says find the integral of ln of x dx. So this time I only have one thing in there. I only have an integrand that's ln of x with respect to x is how I'm integrating. But again, I don't have any formulas for this. Using u sub isn't going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and try integration by parts. So for this, I'm going to let u equal ln of x. And again, you need to select something that you can take the derivative of, which we can. ln of x, we can't take the derivative of. And then also the rest of it would be what we're going to be integrating and letting that equal to dv. And that's just going to be equal to dx. So taking the derivative of u, we get du equals, and the derivative of ln of x is going to be 1 over x dx. And then integrating dv and dx, I get v is equal to x. So again, from here, integration by parts is going to be the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. Substituting in everything that we have, we know u is ln of x, v is going to be equal to x minus the integral of v du. So v is x, and then du is equal to 1 over x dx. From here I can clean this up. We put that first x in front of my ln. You do not multiply those two x's together. One is with the logarithm and one is not. Then minus, and if you notice here my x's are going to reduce, and I just have the integral of dx, or if you want to put the 1 in there, you can. So we have x ln of x minus the integral dx is going to be minus x plus my constant c. And this would be my final answer. It's also good to note that you can still check these by taking the derivative. So on the next page, the next example, we're going to go ahead and circle, and we'll look at this one together in class. The example right below it, though, is a definite integral. You'll notice that we have numbers on our integral symbol. And so working this out, we will get a numerical answer. And so this says, find the integral from 1 to e of x squared ln of x dx. And so again, for this, going through that process of I cannot integrate this, how it's written, and then asking yourself if the u substitution will work, trying that if you need to, and noticing that that doesn't work for us, and then moving on to integration by parts. And so for integration by parts, we're going to let u equal something and then dv equal something. So for this one, I'm going to let u equal ln of x. And the reason why is because I cannot integrate ln of x like we saw in the last example. So therefore, I need to make sure that it is written with my u. And then the rest of it, the x squared and the dx, is going to be my dv. And then from here, taking the derivative of u, so du is equal to, derivative of ln of x is going to be 1 over x dx. And then integrating dv, I get v. And integrating x squared is going to become 1 third x cubed. So from here, I know that my integration by parts formula is going to be the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du and substituting everything in. So we know that u is equal to ln of x, v is equal to 1 third x cubed minus the integral of v, which again is 1 third x cubed, du, which is 1 over x dx. From here, you can note that we are dealing with a definite integral, and if you wanted to, you could put the 1 in e on my integral and also put down the 1 and e evaluating that for my first term. I usually leave them off. I think it gets a little bit too crowded when I'm doing my work. But again, that's a personal choice and up to you. I'm going to leave them off for right now and put them on at the very end once I've integrated my whole entire expression. So from here, cleaning this up, I have 1 third x cubed ln of x minus, and I'm going to bring that 1 third out in front of my integral, since it is just a constant, x to the third divided by x will become x squared dx. And then from here I can integrate. So I get 1 third x cubed ln of x minus 
1 third integrating x squared we get 1 third x cubed. I'm not going to put my plus c because I am dealing with a definite integral and that definite integral says we have to evaluate the whole entire thing from x equals 1 to e. So I'm first going to clean this up a little bit and I get 1 third x cubed ln of x minus 1 over 9 x cubed and again we're going to evaluate this whole entire expression from x equals 1 to e. So first substituting in e we get 1 third e to the third ln of e minus 1 over 9 e cubed minus and then substituting in 1 we get 1 third ln of 1 minus 1 over 9 times 1 or just 1 over 9 and then from here ln of 1 is just 0 and then ln of e is just 1 so this first term is going to simplify to 1 third e cubed minus 1 over 9 e cubed and then I have a minus negative 1 ninth or plus 1 ninth and then from here if you were to get a common denominator you would have instead of 1 third multiplying the top and the bottom by 3 we get 3 over 9 and so 3 over 9 minus 1 over 9 and they're both e to the third is going to be 2 over 9 e to the third plus 1 ninth and so that would be our answer. The example at the top of the next page I'm going to go ahead and circle and we'll look at that one together in class. The last example is a word problem that says the rate of change of revenue in dollars per calculator from the sale of x calculators is given by r prime of x is 8x plus 4 times ln of x plus 1. Find the total revenue from the sale of the first 10 calculators. Round two decimal places. So in order to do this, we need to find the integral from 0 to 10 since it's the first 10 calculators and we're integrating again because we have that rate function and I need to know what the actual revenue is not the rate of the revenue and so I need to integrate r prime of x with respect to x so setting this up I'm going to have the integral from 0 to 10 of 8x plus 4 ln of x plus 1 dx and so for integrating this you'll notice that I cannot integrate it how it's written if I were to try u sub I'll be stuck you'll notice that I am dealing with two different things I have a polynomial and a logarithmic function and so usually because I have two different things I'm gonna have to put things in parts or integrate by parts and so we're gonna let u equal and again I can only integrate an ln a natural log function so that would have to be what I let u equal and the rest of it it would be dv which is 8x plus 4 dx and so taking a derivative of u I get ln of x plus 1 would be 1 over x plus 1 times the derivative of the inside function which is x plus 1 or just the derivative of x is 1 and then dx and then for the second part I'm going to integrate both sides when I do that I get v equals and I'm going to get 4x squared plus 4x and from here I can use my integration by parts formula which says the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du so u is going to be ln of x plus 1 times v which is going to be 4x squared plus 4x minus the integral of v which is 4x squared plus 4x du which is going to be 1 over x plus 1 dx so from here if you look at the integrand you're able to factor out a 4x so I'm going to go ahead and do that in the next step. Let me put my polynomial in front. I have 4x squared plus 4x times the natural log of x plus 1 minus 
and then going ahead and pulling out my 4x, I'd have x plus 1 times 1 over x plus 1 dx. And you'll notice from here, my x plus 1s are going to reduce and simplify. And so we have 4x squared plus 4x times ln of x plus 1 minus the integral of 4x dx. And we can integrate 4x with respect to x. So we have 4x squared plus 4x times the natural log of x plus 1 minus, and then integrating this, we get 2x squared. And again, because we're dealing with a definite integral, I'm not going to put my plus c. I'm just going to make a little note here, put this all in a parenthesis, and say I'm going to evaluate this from x equals 0 to 10. And so from here, I'm going to substitute in 10 first. And so we have 4 times 10 squared plus 4 times 10 times ln of 10 plus 1 or 11 minus 2 times 10 squared. And then substituting in 0, the first term would just sum to 0. The second one would also and then substituting this all in on our calculator in rounding two decimal places. And since we're dealing with money, this is going to be $855.07. And again, this is in dollars that we're dealing with.